Theseus's backstory. Theseus's birth and childhood were not exactly what you call normal. His mom was called Aethra, the daughter of King Pythias of Trozen, where Theseus grew up in the royal palace. Not a bad start to life, you might say, but sadly, he didn't know his dad. Who exactly Theseus's father was remained a mystery. It was probably Aegeus, king of Athens, but it could also have been Poseidon, god of the sea. That's right, a god, which would make Theseus a demigod, meaning half man, half god. Just before Theseus was born, Aegeus said to Aethra that if the baby was a boy, he must pass a special test when he grew up. Aegeus placed his sword and a pair of sandals underneath a huge heavy rock and said that his son must try to lift the rock and take the items. If he succeeded, he would prove his strength and could travel to Athens to begin his life as a man. Theseus's mom thought it was best not to tell little Theseus about this tricky test, so he spent his childhood like a normal boy. He played with his friends and helped his family out by chopping wood, hunting, and building things. Every day he got stronger and grew taller. One day when he had grown taller than his mom, she told him about his father and the strength test he had set. Theseus found it easy peasy to lift the heavy rock to get the sword and the sandals. So off he went to Athens. Unfortunately, he had to face six tests on the way. Part two. The first test came after only walking a few miles. Theseus found his path blocked by a brute carrying a shiny club. I am Periphetes, he roared. Prepare to be beaten with my brass club. To buy himself some thinking time, Theseus said, I don't reckon your club is made of brass. It's just shiny wood. The gormless bully paused and then grunted. It is too brass. Here, hold it and see for yourself. Theseus grabbed the club and beat Periphetes with his own weapon. Oh. 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 Theseus's next test came at the town of Itzmian. A giant called Sinus hung around the town gates to capture unsuspecting travelers. He tied them to pine trees and catapulted them into the distance. Again, using his cunning and strength, Theseus beat the giant at his own game and catapulted him as far as the eye could see. So, Theseus passed his second test. The bronze club that Theseus took from Periphetes came in handy in his third test. Here, he had to face a man-eating pig of the town of Chromium. This bizarre creature was a real nuisance. It caused chaos in the local town. Theseus simply banged it on the head with the giant club. Now he was really getting the hang of this test malarkey and continued down the road to Athens with a spring in his step. Not much further along the road, which wound round some perilous cliffs, an elderly man called out, I am Siron, and these are my cliffs. To go any further, you must wash my stinky feet. Theseus looked at the eerie man. And what would happen if I don't? replied Theseus. Then you'll be sorry, and don't think that puny little twig you're carrying will save you because you're absolutely wrong. Now, although test four seemed like a horrible task, Theseus thought he better get it over with. However, as he rolled up his sleeves to begin washing the man's disgusting feet, he peered over the edge of the cliff 
and saw an enormous man-eating turtle snapping at the bottom. Theseus realized that Siron was the infamous robber that threw people off the cliffs for his man-eating turtle. So, with an almighty effort, Theseus pulled the elderly robber's feet from under him and heaved him off the cliff. And that was the end of Siron. Soon, Theseus reached the town of Eleusis, where he would come to his fifth test. This was the place of King Cercyon, who was a well-known, strong wrestler. As Theseus came towards the town, King Cercyon stopped him and challenged him to a wrestling match. You cannot pass until you defeat me in a wrestling match, the king called out confidently. Oh, if I must, Theseus replied. Theseus was exhausted from all this test nonsense. So he fought with the wrestler king and banged his head to the ground. Cercyon wrestled no more. By this time, it was getting dark, so Theseus made his way to the plains of Eleusis. Here, he went to the nearest inn and asked for a bed for the night. After all, he was very tired. Now the innkeeper of that particular inn was the well-known evil Procrustes, who claimed to have a bed to fit anyone. If a person was too tall for the bed, he would chop off their legs. And if a person was too short, he'd stretch their arms and legs. So Theseus, now thoroughly exhausted, lost all patience and handled this sixth test by chopping oh. off Procrustes' no. own legs. The prices here cost an arm and a leg. Night, night, he said to the bewildered, pain-stricken Procrustes. Then, feeling pretty smug, Theseus had an excellent night's sleep. The tests hadn't exactly been a piece of cake, but mighty Theseus had completed them in style. He entered into the city of Athens and met his father, King Aegeus. He was extra happy to see him, as he needed help in his war against King Minos of Crete. The two men didn't get much father-son bonding time, though, because soon Theseus was off to Crete to face his biggest challenge yet, the Minotaur. 